ways in which God is working in and amongst the congregation as the Spirit moves amongst us. So use this time, as I said, for time of reflection uh, as a prayer uh, for the church.
morning. Good morning. Welcome as we do gather together for worship this day as we continue to celebrate our Easter season and the ways in which God's resurrecting power and it transforms us in our lives of faith. We do continue to pray for those who are listed in your bulletin uh, for Carol Brooks' um, niece, Teresa Murphy. I didn't write it down. That was my problem. Uh, Teresa Murphy, who passed away. Um, so please do keep uh, Carol and her family in your prayers. Also for the family of Elizabeth Gazinski, uh, Joanne Ickens' mother, who did pass away uh, earlier uh, this week. And we continue our prayers for Chuck Helvig, a former member who's uh, in the hospital uh, dealing with cancer as well as some Alzheimer's. So please do keep him in your prayers. Is there anyone else that we should be especially mindful of in this morning's worship? As always, I invite those who are joining us online to add any other prayers and to also let us know that you're worshiping with us this morning. I invite everyone to please stand as we begin our worship as we are called into God's presence. Christ is risen, alleluia. Remember what Jesus told us? Remember that Jesus died. Christ has appeared to the disciples. Christ has appeared alongside us. And Jesus Christ has still today. So friends, why are we still looking up? But what did Jesus tell us to do? So why are we still looking up? Yet your call is not to stand staring up to heaven, but to start looking to those around you. Christ is not gone, but is all around us. Christ is risen, alleluia. Let us join in our opening hymn as we sing our alleluia praises to God.
God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So this helps me to see things so much more clearly so I don't trip and fall, so I don't like have to squint at everything. So tomorrow something's happening different. Does anybody know what's happening tomorrow? Tomorrow in the afternoon, in fact, Mrs. Johnson made some really special things for the eclipse tomorrow, so for a coffee hour, so you have to come and see them. If nothing else besides eating them. So, yeah, I don't want to bring it all home, so we better stay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow is the eclipse is happening, which means that the moon is going to cover over the sun. And it's going to block out the sun for just a little while. But it's going to make the sun even brighter, so you have to like wear really special glasses, which if I put them on now, everything's just dark. I can't see anything out of them. But with the, with the eclipse, you'll be able to see them better. One of the things with the eclipse is then too is that it makes it, we can see how God makes incredible things. That God causes the moon to be in front of the sun, and we can see all the things that marvel us at God. So just like I can see all God's beautiful people here with better with my glasses on, we can see the sun and the moon tomorrow with easier to, to see them with these glasses as well. So you each get a pair of glasses. Would you like a pair of glasses for tomorrow? Some of you may already have them. You can't see anything out of them right now. That's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lucy. You'll sit with me in coffee every night. About an hour, right? You want some for your kids or you already have some? Yeah. 
and then we can practice today. Take a practice tomorrow. So thanks for coming up. You guys can go to Sunday school. I have a very small Sunday school today. Um, there's a couple there. We won't sing the song because I didn't make my instructions today for the song. reading from Acts. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this a time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by, for, by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day during the way. When they had entered the city, they went up to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Word of God, word of life. unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you, wherever you enter house, stay there until you leave the place. If anyone will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In my first church, when I first started in ministry, because of timing and everything, I started right before Advent. Uh, which for a pastor means you needed to have been planning for that at least for a month or more. And so I like, felt like I hit the ground running and was already behind. And I've never 
quite, even after 30 years, have never quite gotten used to having to plan so far ahead. In fact, frankly, you asked me earlier, like, what are we doing when the narrative ends on Pentecost, which is mid-May? I'm like, oh, mid-May, right? I gotta plan for the summer already, right? Because it seems still so far away, but I have to plan accordingly. And if so much planning goes into Holy Week and Easter that my mind was there, and come this week, I'm like, what am I supposed to be doing now? <laughs> What's the next thing? Because so much effort goes to one particular time. It's almost like, now what? Now what? Easter was last week. We had the Trinity grass. We still have some lilies. If you ordered a lily, please take them because Kathy does not want to water them during the week. So if even if you did not take one, take one, take one again. Or even if you did not order one, take one anyway. We kind of like have already moved on. In fact, this Sunday, often traditionally in churches across the place, is kind of known as a low Sunday, kind of like the Sunday after Christmas and the Sunday after Easter. It's such a big celebration that, well, families are still, some of them are still on break and coming home today. And so it tends to be lower attendance and lower everything. Now what? Now we move from Mark's account of the resurrection where the women run away in fear and we are left hanging to now we go into Acts, which just a little trivia for you is Acts is part two of Luke's gospel written by the same author put together. So that's why it started off my friend Theophilus. If you look to the beginning of Luke, Luke Theophilus is there as well, which basically means lover of God. <laughs> And so he continues, he begins to tell the story about what happened next. Now we're given a little more detail in some of the other gospels with the road to Emmaus where two disciples encounter Jesus as they're walking along to uh, Peter uh, by, by the Sea of Galilee with Peter uh, where Jesus says, do you love me? Peter asks him three times and Peter says, of course I love you, feed my sheep. A few more stories like that, but here it says, and many other proofs, many other things happened without going into details. And then what? Jesus ascends into heaven, and it's almost, I always find this the, one of the most comical scenes, I think, in, in scripture. And maybe it's just my favorite comical scene. That they're there looking up in the heavens like, what do you expect Jesus to come right back down? Is he just kind of showing you a parlor trick, like I can do this, and now I'm going to come back down again? Right? But what goes up must come down, right? And the angels are like, um, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Now what? And they're not sure now what. In fact, they even ask Jesus when he's still there, is this when the kingdom's going to be fulfilled? Is this the time? Is this now? It's like, yeah, no, not yet. Not yet. So now what? They're not yet quite sure what to do. And so they go back to the upper room and they spend time in prayer, constantly devoting themselves to prayer. Prayer, I think, sometimes is one of those things that we kind of take for granted. And how often do we say in the course of a day, like, I'll pray for you, but do we? Sometimes it may just be thinking of them, it can be a prayer. There's not a right or wrong way to pray. People are often intimidated. Pastor, don't ask me to pray in front of others. It's, people are notorious in meetings. Sometimes when we begin with prayer, they always say, okay, we'd like to offer a prayer or even at a potluck, and they all look at their feet. Like, I don't know, is your prayer written on their toes? But don't make eye contact with the pastor. It's kind of like when we're in school, right? Don't make eye contact with the teacher because you'll be called upon. We don't want to pray, Pastor. I don't know how to do it. There's not a right or wrong way to pray. It's just talking to God, but it's also listening to God. We always feel like we need to be doing something with prayer, that we think the disciples were constantly devoting to themselves. They must have had some sort of prayer book, right? To be able to do that. No, they didn't. There were no prayer books then. There were scripture that they could definitely use as prayer. But they were constantly seeking God's guidance, and God's spirit to fill them, to guide them into what's going to happen next. And what we'll hear at Pentecost in another 40 some odd days will be the Pentecost story and the sending of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus even says to them, you will be anointed with the Holy Spirit 
You don't need to have all the answers. You need to just be open to God's Spirit moving in and amongst you now. Now we're trying something new during the prelude, and this is not, well, as an aside, it's kind of a secondary thing. It's to get people to start focusing, to not be talking during Franklin's prelude. But more than that, it's also to spend a time in prayer. We've got so much stuff going on in our daily lives. And maybe there's things already in your mind about what you need to do for the rest of the day. Like, okay, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to call this person, I need to get this ready for tomorrow. And so many, so many things going on in our brains that sometimes we need to just stop and listen and pray. So during the prelude, at least until Pentecost, we'll see how it goes, but at least through Pentecost. I'm going to be inviting all of you to spend this time in the prelude to pray. To pray for, your, to pray for yourself, to say, God, all right, settle my spirit. <laughs> Help me to remember why I'm here. Help me to push those other things aside. But even more than that, to pray for the life of the church. To pray for us as a congregation of people of faith. To say, God, where are you leading and calling us? As a people. We're starting a book study, and there's still time to start because we didn't actually start this past week because people are still getting books. It's called The Sailboat Church. Simple chapters, simple reading, but our basic premise is that churches too often try to be rowboats, and we try to get there by our own power. Have you ever tried that? It gets tiring after a while. And Michael and I one time had gone fishing. Well, he went fishing. I sat in the canoe with my book. <laughs> and it was a very small pond. It wasn't really big. It wasn't a lake. It was, uh, and so we had gone. It was, but it was a bit of a windy day. And the wind started to get picked up more and more. And of course, we would have to go paddle against the wind to get back to where we were parked. And so we tried. We paddled and we paddled. And Michael's like, paddle harder, paddle harder. I couldn't do it. And we finally like, just let the wind push us to the other side of the pond. Again, it wasn't big. Walked around, got the truck, came back to get the canoe. So often we try to row, or sometimes go against the spirit. And God's saying, you need to be a sailboat, not a rowboat. The church needs to be a sailboat, to, to be open to God's spirit. That Yes, you got to do, I'm not a sailor, so like tacking with the sails and all the things that go into that but to see how God is blowing in our midst. Because God is at work. God is in our midst. God is calling us as a people of God with who we are now, not who we were, or who some of the other churches, but who we are now. And to see how God's spirit is moving in and amongst us as a family of faith and as people of God. What now? But what now is always to pray first. When I was in upstate New York, they have their own mission statement, and I'm sure it's changed by now because it's been a number of years. But their mission statement was that we are resurrection people. Who, I was on Senate Council, so I had it memorized. <laughs> it still stayed in my head. We are resurrection people who pray first, walk together, and change lives. Pray first. We are resurrection people. That Easter is more than just a Sunday. But that we are people of the resurrection, knowing that God's spirit moves in and amongst us, knowing that God transforms our world and our lives by God's spirit, and that we are called to pray first, not as a last resort, or not because we're supposed to, but because when we pray first, we are seeking God to guide us. Not what I want, not what any one person wants, but what God wants for us, for our lives, our world, and our church. So as a part of this book study, at the back of the book, and I've made little devotion cards with it, is there's 40 days of prayer. And so each day has a scripture reading. They have a little bit of a, she has a little bit of a focus one of the scriptures is a kind of a focus. And then um, what she calls listening to God. And it's basically God speaking to us. But to take this, whether you use the whole thing or not, 
but to take and read, first of all, read scripture out loud. Because I don't know about you, when I read, I skim, right? Because you want to just want to get to the next thing. But read it out loud, because we hear it differently. Read it out loud and to think about the ways of what, what is God saying to me? What is God saying to the church through this scripture? For instance, we talked a little bit about it on our Wednesday and Thursday Bible study this week. The first day is Jeremiah 29 that has the verse, Surely I know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. It's a good verse. It also talks about seek the welfare of the place where you're speaking to people in exile, speaking to those to, to seek the welfare of the city in which you are planted. And really, the word welfare here should be shalom, Hebrew word for shalom or peace. Seek the peace, the wholeness of God's people. So to spend some time in prayer and reflection about what is God saying to us. And there's places to make notes. And I have large print too. I know my eyes are getting, you know, so it's regular print and small print. And it was also in the email that went out this week or the past couple weeks. But to pray, because that's what the disciples did. After Jesus ascended into heaven and they were waiting for him to come back, and we're still waiting for him to come back. So now what? Pray. Now what? Pray and believe and hope in the promise of the resurrection that is more than just something that happened in the past or that we celebrated last Sunday, more than just that promise that Jesus will come again, but that God will resurrect, renew, and empower us as a people of God here and now. And we got to open the sails. we got to get out of the rowboat and try that sailboat. And so let us pray first. And always, because God does amazing things with God's Spirit. It's for this that we do proclaim. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as we sing together our next hymn.
creed. We believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of God being with the Father, through all all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary, and became truly man. For our sake he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped the Lord of God, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism with the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the promise of the resurrection, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, you send us out into the world to bear witness to your transformative love and justice. Give us the words to say and the opportunities to say them, that all might experience the fullness of your presence. God of new life, in mercy, hear our prayer. Creation <laughs> witnesses to your power and glory, O oh God. Make us partners with the natural world ever aware of our interdependence and committed to our mutual flourishing. God of new life, in mercy, hear our prayer. Soften the hearts and minds of those who govern through fear and oppression and open them to partnerships with other nations for the benefit of all. God of new life, in mercy, hear our prayer. Be with those in our family our lives, and our community who suffer illness, trauma, grief, and all forms of pain and loss. We pause to pray especially for those we name now, aloud or in our hearts. We also lift up in prayer Hayden, Jane, Madeline, Karen, Joseph, Mackenzie, Loretta, John, Joseph, Rose, and Paul, for those who have no one to name them, and those who do not know Christ's name. Help us to bear your healing love to them. God of new life, in mercy to our prayer. Inspire, <clears throat> strengthen, and support missionaries in their work to build communities and contribute to the health and well-being of all they serve throughout the world. God of new life, in mercy, hear our we remember with gratitude the saints who carried your word into the world from the beginning of the church through to the present day. May we follow in their example to be open about our own faith that others might follow after us. God of new life, in in mercy, hear, our hear other petitions may be offered silently or online in the comments. Lift up and remember the lives of Elizabeth and Teresa. Pray for their families as they mourn their passing. Bring them your comfort and your peace. We also lift up Chuck as he is hospitalized for cancer treatments as well as for his dementia. Be with him and give him relief from pain and from suffering. We do place in your arms all for whom we pray, confident in your mercy and grace bestowed upon all people through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The love, and, uh, the love and peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share a sign of peace with one another. You may be
you seated as we continue with our offering.
alone are holy. You alone are God. The universe declares your praise. Beyond the stars, beyond the seas. Within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness. Through the water by night and day. Across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We do give you thanks for your dear Son. At the heart of human life, near to those who suffer. Beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. For we do remember that the night in which he was betrayed, when our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us. Amen. 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 And to the end, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit. Amen. Within this meal, among your people throughout the world, blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus. By your spirit in your church without end. Amen. Gathered by the spirit, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The one who was taken up in a cloud is yet here at this holy table. I invite you now to share with him in the bread and wine of the new covenant. Come, for all is prepared. Thank you, God.
divine and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Living God, as the disciples ate and drank with their risen Lord, we have been nourished with the very presence of Christ. Through this meal, may we be strengthened to keep your word and to proclaim the power of your love in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. We take the opportunity to share our mission and ministry announcements. I'd ask first if any have any announcements announcements this morning. I'm going to assume Kathy's going to tell you to take gloves. As I said, even if you did not order one and you would like one or you know someone else who would, please take them. They get lonely here during the week, so uh, unless we're her team to do that. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the Brewster Care Shelter in a time of transition uh, for us. Uh, Charlie and Irene Germain are stepping back as the overall co coordinators and we are breaking it down. Uh, into a variety of areas. Uh, while it won't start again till next fall, uh, we will. We want to begin to uh, to begin to have some of those roles fulfilled. It's a year of transition, so it's only a one-year commitment. I promise. I know sometimes you do something in the church and it becomes an ever-after thing, um, but we are committing folks only for one year. So if you're interested in that, the the, the different areas are there. We've had them in the bulletin each week, um, but we can give you some more detail if you'd like to do that. Um, we are also extending our Lent and outreach offering. To, we're doing it to ELCA World Hunger. Uh, and so um, there's a board on the side that says a little bit more about it. And some of the areas of, of ministry, the money goes all around the world, uh, United States included. And we're going to be looking to help uh, a sponsor maybe a cow. I'm thinking a cow, which is like $500. Um, so people can raise, can use the little piggy banks we have, or just bring it in um, by Pentecost Sunday. So that's not until mid, like third, I think it's a third week in May. So you've got some time to do that, to take your spare change, put it in the piggy bank or whatever, uh, to begin to collect money for that. As I said, also we are starting uh, our sailboat church co uh, conversation. Uh, I do have books available if you would like to participate in that. Uh, they're free if you want to just borrow them. They're ten dollars if you'd like to purchase one. You can also just get them online. You can get an ebook if you want to. Um, but if you'd like to be a part of those discussions or even just read it on your own, uh, our discussions are Wednesday nights on Zoom at seven o'clock and Thursday mornings in person here in Fellowship Hall at ten ish. Ten usually pretty ten, pretty much ten. Uh, so do join us if you're able to do that. Seeing other announcements, I invite you to stand as we conclude our worship together with God's blessing. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be good to you. May the Lord fill you with peace, love, and much laughter. And may he set you free to celebrate the life that God has given you in all its fullness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And do join us also for coffee hour. There's some really fun things for the eclipse uh, in there, so, so do come for coffee.
Holy 